Hey guys, it's Nurse Howie, and I wanted to talk to you about these videos that I'm making. Um, I wanted to post a lot of videos about antibiotics, nursing apps that I'm trying to make, and ventilating patients in the ICU, and things that are pretty important to me. And even though I don't feel like I have all the knowledge, I'm really excited and passionate about finding out exactly what I need to know in order to become a more competent nurse and then be able to pass that along to other people who might not have the time, who are just as capable, just as smart, and probably more competent than I am. But it just, I have a really hard time. Um, Moria, get out of the way. Okay, stop. Anyway. I have a really hard time um, with self-doubt. Uh, there's lots of research about self-doubt uh, with nurses um, who just became nurses, RNs, LVNs, and also um, nurse practitioners that started working independently and autonomously. And um, where are you? And. There's this thing called the imposter syndrome, and I know I don't know everything, and I know that there's a lot to learn, and there's people who've dedicated their whole lives and their careers to just learning the science of medicine and nursing, but who am I to post a video? Like, how dare I uh, put something up for other people, you know? Um, and it's not just for um, other people's benefits is for my own personal edification as well. I want to be able to be as knowledgeable and have, the, have be able to apply what I've learned into everyday practice so I can give it to people who actually need it, um, i.e. the real patients that need my care, you know? And um, that ranges from everything from very scientific and technical information to things that are um, more human, you know, the more human side, like compassion and even the way I talk, you know, the tone of my voice and trying to make somebody feel assured and um, comfortable, you know, during a time of stress. So I want to make all these videos and I want to post them up and I just want to put them out there and um, I want it to be very competent and perfect and amazing and the lighting is great and the editing is amazing, but you know what? Every time I'm about to start on this project, I think to myself, no, no Howie, you're not good enough. You have, you don't have enough experience or, you know, like, you may have a lot of knowledge in one thing, but, you know, like, your degree in biochemistry isn't a degree in nursing, and even if you have a degree in, in both, all you have is a bachelor's, and that's not nearly enough to be able to um, make videos about these topics. And that stops me every time, you know? And I think of other things. Even if I don't want to talk like that, um, I think of other ways to divert uh, me from publishing videos like, oh, well, you should be doing your homework. Um, you know, you're caught up, but you could still be ahead of the game or you have some grocery shopping to do. I mean, just basically life. But um, I know that I have enough time to do these things and I plan them out. But for some odd reason, when I want to make time for the video, like even if I've made a specific particular schedule just to make videos, um, I just don't want to do it because I just feel like I'm not good enough. Has this ever happened to you? I... When I go into the, the, the nursing ward, I want to be able to make sure that I'm competent enough that the family believes in me. And um, I don't want to just fake through that. I want, I want to exude confidence. Just really know that I know what I'm doing. But I also know that that comes with time. And even though I may have a lot of experience in other aspects of my life, I may not have the greatest experience in any particular unit that I work at. So. Um, I'm going to look over some research to figure out exactly how this feeling of being an imposter uh, stops people from going forward in their career as well as advancing their nursing care. Um, 
You know, does it stop you in your tracks? Does it make you uh, even more of an ineffective caregiver? You know, this imposter syndrome is a real thing and it's barely being studied, but it's been confirmed that it happens. Um, specifically, even the, um, uh, the manual for advanced nurse, I, I'm sorry, for um, advanced uh, registered nurse practitioners uh, or advanced practice nurses or advanced practice RNs, they see that the feeling of being an imposter lasts for about a year. And that's a long time. You know, how many patients will not get the full volume of your care just because you're afraid to act and to apply all that training that you received? You know, because there's always that thing in the back of your head like, oh, well, you know, I don't have the same medical school training. How could I be treating patients? But you also have years of nursing experience. You have a lot of life to, life lessons. And, um, you know, you're taught to take care of this particular demographic of patients. You know, like a lot of the advanced practice nurses are trained in a very concentrated fashion. So we deal with uh, a certain demographic. We don't take over um, a doctor's medical practice they're trained in a medical aspect of diseases and um, you know of uh, disease-based medicine and so they gravitate towards that we're trained in patient-centered care so we have to gravitate toward a different area and if we try to be something that we're not well that's number one legally um, inappropriate because we're not trained to take care of patients that way but it also takes away and you throw away all the training that you receive because you um, you just don't feel like you amount to the same quantity of knowledge um, just because you didn't get the same training. Well, the reason why you got the training for your specified demographic is because you stood there and you sat into the lecture hall and then you turned in all these term papers over and over and over again and did your research and learn how to research and learn how to do lit reviews and to criticize research and to make sure that things have uh, transferability and accountability and pr precision and you know and you look at the regression analysis you look at the p intervals the con confidence intervals and all that stuff to to show that you have evidence to be um, competent in one certain part of care but I don't know, does that, does that all translate when you're finally sitting there looking at your patient? Oh yeah. So, I don't know, I will try to make videos, but I think I'm just going to embrace that it's a messy ordeal, that making videos, trying to talk to you, um, trying to proceed with my career and just live my life is not an exact science and maybe we shouldn't treat it that way thanks for listening see you later